I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, listen, I just trust the Holy Spirit to always help us praise God and bring forth His truth. Now, today, are you ready to call in your daily bread? Thank you, Jesus. Say this with me. Say, Father, today I demand and I receive my daily bread. It's coming to me now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. It, it's so beautiful to see God show himself up in your life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today's broadcast. Thank you, Lord, because burdens are being lifted right now and yokes are being destroyed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now, we have been looking at contending earnestly for the faith that was delivered to the saints. What was on the mind of Jesus when he gave them the gospel? He, he was on his mind. You know, sometimes it's important to think. You know, sometimes I, I, I sit down and I ask myself the question, what are we doing? As preachers, we preach, people get saved, they come into Christ, uh, we take them through different programs, different classes, and what next? You, you, you look at the church and, and you begin to ask yourself, how much impact are we making in the society we live in? And then, but how do we really begin to make impact? How do we cause the name of Jesus to reign? So sometimes we think, oh, when we do miracles, you see there are, there are people who even your miracles will had in their hearts the more. So how do we get this thing walking if you understand what i mean how how do we how do we get this thing how do we get to the place what was on god's mind when he delivered the gospel to us now we shouldn't think further let's go to the scriptures and find out ephesians chapter 4 ephesians chapter 4 in verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. For, meaning he gave all these for this reason. And what is the reason? The perfecting of the saints. Meaning, on God's mind, the saints are to be perfected. Meaning, the saints are supposed to be perfect. If he did something for your perfecting, it means he had it in mind that you should become perfect. So, he did something, he put some system down, for your perfecting. <clears throat> for the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Meaning, he sent us, number one, that we be perfected. Number two, that we do the work of the ministry. Now, what is the work of the ministry? The work of the ministry. <laughs> the work of the ministry. Hey. 
The work of the ministry is reaching out to everyone around us. Now, Jesus said, and this is the work of the ministry, go ye into all the world and make disciples of me of every nation. That's the work of the ministry. That's the work of the ministry. We have been commanded to, I want you to note that statement as you find in Matthew. The last instruction Jesus gave to them in Matthew 28. He said, go into all the world and, let me read it. Let's, let's hold on. Don't, don't close this because we're still coming here. I, I just want you to see this so we don't mix the words. Matthew. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Rigu Zavege de Bragaja. Jesus, verse 18, Matthew 28. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power, that is authority, in, is given unto me in heaven and, on, and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach. Mm. Go ye therefore and teach. What does it mean to teach? It means to show how. Show how. Go ye therefore and teach who? All nations. Praise God. Show how. Hmm. So when, they, when you show them how and they begin to do it, they become disciples. Did you get that? The, you don't command people to be disciples. You show them how. And when you show them how and they see how easy it is and they begin to do it, they become disciples. Thank you, Jesus. Are you getting this? Now he says, teach who? A group of small people. All nations. Meaning Jesus is expecting us to go teach all nations. Teach all nations. Now, now hear me. There are two instructions Jesus gave to the church. This is one. Now follow me. Teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy, Holy Ghost. Now he says baptizing them. He's not talking about water baptism yet. That's not what he meant. He didn't say baptizing them in water. No. He says baptizing. The baptize means to dip them into what? See, baptizing them in the name of the Father the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit, meaning we are to teach people the doctrine of the Father, the Holy Ghost, and the Son. Teach them these things until they understand it. Or let them know it. Let it, let it be everywhere. And when they hear the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, they, they know that there is such a thing. And until they begin to act accordingly. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Teach them to observe everything I have commanded you. How do you teach? To teach is not just to sit down and talk. To teach is you leave it, they see it, you correct them, all part of teaching. You admonish them, you correct them, you show them how. And guess what? And lo, I am with you always even to the end of the world. Mm. That is the work of the ministry. So now he said, the saints are to be perfected. We're back in Ephesians 4.11 now. Now in verse 12, he says, we are to perfect the saints. So we are the saints. We are being perfected, number one. Number two, we are doing the work of the ministry, which I just showed you. So we, we are up about. Now that's why you go to your job and make disciples of Jesus Christ in that place. You go to your business community and make disciples of Jesus Christ in that place. You go to your medical field and make disciples of Jesus Christ in that place. How? By teaching them. Teaching them. You know, you know we, we, we make this mistake of like, okay, um, you need to give your life to Christ. You need to give your life to Christ. You need to give your life to Christ. And I say, yeah, preacher, you have come again. You have come again. We get some results, yeah. But beyond that, 
He sent us to teach them, irrespective of irrespective of them giving their life to Jesus Christ or not, they are supposed to become conformists. They are supposed to conform to the teachings, to the things that Jesus has commanded you. Now, how do you get them to conform to those things? You teach, you correct, you, ed ed you admonish, you edify them. You see, you, you get into the place, oh, no, this is not how things should be done now. Why? There's a better way of doing this thing. You, know, you get into an, an organization and everybody's stealing in that place. What do you do? All of you, I know you are stealing. One day, God will arrest you. No. You're not making disciples like that. You get into that environment and say, hey, I notice you guys steal a lot here. Why? Man, how will you survive without stealing? Come on. There's a better way. What better way? I'll show you. I'll show you. You begin to teach them about tithing because that's what you do. See, practice this. You, you know, so we've got to be bold sometimes. Say, hey, you know what? Can you practice this for three months? Three months. If you don't see result, you can go back to your study. You see, you no, know, there are few people who are the children of the devil in environments. Few that in their, their frame is evil. A lot of people you will meet, you'll be amazed how they want their lives to change, how they don't or enjoy the wrong that they are doing. So you say, Look, let's start practicing something that I practice. And what is that? Tithing. When you get your salary, Take out 10% from it. And let's pray together. And God will guide you on who to give it. And you give it to that person. And watch how God is going to bless you. That's one. Just tighten it up. Three months. And let's see. Now, why do you steal? And you know, I have to feed my family now. I have to do this. I have to do that. Okay, fine. Tell yourself, these three months, no stealing. But... Now that's what repentance is. He's repenting from stealing into tithing. See, <laughs> you getting it? Yeah, he's repenting from stealing into tithing. Now that's exactly what Paul meant when he said, let him that stole, steal no more. But rather let him walk, earning something for himself so that he will have to give. To give what? To tithe. Tithing is the simplest way to start prosperity journey. See, so he's stealing to meet his needs. Now you're make, teaching him to repent. He says, practice tithing for three months. And you teach him the truth on how to tithe. Not the religious way of tithing now. The truth on how to tithe. When you get that money, sit down, kneel down, talk to the Lord. Say, Lord, I have your money and I want to obey your command. And the Lord will put it in your heart where you should take that money to. Or who you should give that money to. Yeah. And then you take it. And then you obey the Lord. And go about your business. I'm telling you the truth. The person is going to see so much favor within those three months. That when he looks at the life he used to look still before. It becomes a shameful thing to him. Now what have you done? You have won one soul. Now, both of you now see this thing is working. You see, all abracasha, you rejoice over it. You discuss it. Hey, man, guess what? Do you know? Ah, I got a call today. What? Someone gave me money today. Are you serious? What did you do? Nothing. But I said, God sent it. You see, because you, God have started sending you to give people money by tithing. Now, God is commanding people to give you money to. Oh. I really don't need to steal. Yes, you don't. <laughs> wow. I never knew life could be this beautiful. Yes, it is. I want to know God some more. Yes, you should. <laughs> and this, this person is so excited and he begins to study. This. He begins to pray. Now the Lord has already started speaking to him. Now, that's how you begin to influence your environment. You get one. Before you know what's happening, two of you now, 
can chase a thousand, ten thousand. You see, and and he said, look, look, let's stop staying in this office. How will you, you talk to this person? I'll talk to this person. Without you know, you go, hey, government will catch you. EFCC will catch you. Come on now. You begin to deal with this issue one after the other, one after penetrating the hearts of men, penetrating them, and they began they begin to see the glory, and they begin to see the glory. Soon, office have changed, productivity level has increased. You know, things are happening right now. And so, what's going on in that place? The light of God has come. There, praise God. Ooh, our time is up today. I'm not just telling you wishful thinking. I'm showing you raw responsibility. We're going to stop here because of time. Praise God. Listen, we're going to continue next week. I bless you today. That indeed, you will find how to do the work of the ministry. You are going to bring, bring the light of God so much in your environment. And God will be glorified in you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I pray this weekend will be the best you have experienced so far. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.